Well, after a seven mile walk and a two hour train journey, nice to get some tea and ciders, nice potatoes, nice bit of juicy vegetables and some cheap sausages from the co-op, reduced to 188. I love a nice bargain. Ooh, caramelized seasoned pork sausages, yum, yum, yum. And yes, I built up a thirst, time for one nice bottle of Australia, being told to try this, I thought I'd give it a go. It's been a while since I've had one of these, so I'm looking forward to having this right now. Here's a look on the brightest side of life. <laughs> oh, and before we get started with the video, I want to say a big shout out to Mac and Cabby. Yes, I've seen you today, Mac and Cabby, kicking the boot in Carlisle. Thank you, Macam Cabby has his own YouTube channel. Pop over and check out the Carlisle Macam Cabby. Right, here we go back again with another video with some more information in news. Yes, news. Starting to get a bit exciting getting this new striker in. Let's move that down a touch. My head looks a little bit too slow. Oh, there we go. Right, anyway, so we're going to go on with Lucius Oninius. He's on the right hand side, he's on the left hand side, but he's in the middle as well. He's everywhere, isn't he? He's played right back, he's played centre mid, he's played se centre back, left back. He's played, you know, both positions of centre, centre defence and also on the right wing. He's, and he's been up top scoring goals. He can play anywhere. Mr. Sunderland, utility player everywhere on that park this lad could fit in and give you a decent game of football jack of all trades but he's your master of any now which position would you have loco nine in your team if it was your player and you had to fit him in where would you squeeze the lad in i personally think center mid would be the position for me but when equa and dan Neil are playing good you can't put him in just yet now, Luke 09 has signed a new year, a new three year deal, new, th new three year deal. Let me know his best position in your team, like I said. Joined in 2018 in July. Yes, two, two, what? 225 appearances. He's got 18 goals and 15 assist to Rooney's. And he, he was there for the AFL Papa John's Trophy, lifting the old cup up in the air. And he got us promoted from League One to the Championship. And he's improving. I think he's improving each season. Whether, you know, people, some people disagree. Some say he's a bit a bit of a liability. But he, I think he's good. I think he's about as he's about the best round peg in a square hole we could possibly have in this side. So I want to wish Luke 09 all the best. Three years, that's as long as you're going to stay at the club, Luke 09, unfortunately, because these own once you hit 30, I think we'll eventually get rid and sell you. I think the next move for Luke going nine will not be a contract. It will be some, it will be getting sold out of the club. Now we'll move on to this because of the 30-year-old situation. Now I think I'm going to start shouting out once every video or whenever I remember to do it. Somebody's comment from the previous video. I'm going to give someone a shout out. Now here's a comment, my favourite comment, whether it's funny, whether it's interesting, or whether it's damn right daft. I'm going to shout out a comment, and this comment today is Rusty Mackham in Grand Canaria. This is what he has to say. Just a side note regarding Bath. After the match, an interview in a newspaper today, Tony Mowbray complimented Coventry centre-half Mac Fadzin, stating that he still believes in a no-nonsense old-school centre-back and went on to describe the same player, you know, like the style we have with, with, with Danny Bart, Danny Bart. I think this is a disguised reference to show that Tony Mowbray would rather play Bath, but of course... He can't agree. He can't disagree with the owners. You know the owners clearly cannot cannot take down against the owners. The owners that employ him at the club, yes, they want rid of Bath Pritchard Gooch, and all, and it's clear it's clear they want to clear the decks for new blood. Now here's a question for you as well: If we had to get rid of Danny Bart Pritchard and, and Gooch. Clearly, Tony Mowbray in that interview. And thank you, Rusty Mackham, for saying that. I don't know if I've described it the way you said it, but you know. Clearly, Tony Mowbray still believes there's a position for Danny Barton. I think Tony Mowbray, if was in full, full control of team picking, he would choose Danny Bart. Danny Bath. But clearly, so who would you have in the side? Would you rather keep Pritchard, Danny Barton, Gooch, or get rid and get three new bodies in? That's the conundrum. Which one? New blood or the three ones? That's going to open a can of worms itself. So there we go. Which three would you rather have? I'd rather keep Pritchard, Barton, Gooch this season. 
a little new blood for another season. Plenty of new bodies already come in and plenty of new bodies we can get in. Now, I can see where the owners are coming from. I want to believe what they're trying to do. And I can see they're trying to get rid of some of the older players to bring in new players to have the funds to buy these new players, to bring these new players through and hopefully lift the club higher. But we do need experience. That's the thing. That's the key experience. Now, we want to believe in, these, in the owners and what they're doing. And we want this plan to eventually come to fruition and get us in the Premier League. But we, we, we as Sunderland fans, we see a player that wears his heart on his sleeve, gives 110% player of the season. We know that player needs rewarding, yet he's not being rewarded this season. And then on the other hand, you've got Luke 9 Mr. Sunderland, three-year contract, getting promoted, keeping in the side. Who would you have, Luke 9 Danny Bard? Questions, questions, questions. Now the Chronicle has come out and said, the striker, the striker, yes, the striker, Nazari Rushen, is set to travel to Sunderland for a medical this week. He's set to travel to Sunderland for a medical this week. That is in the Chronicle. Sunderland have agreed personal terms with Nazarai Rushin. We've agreed personal terms, so it gets rolling on nicely. It is rolling on nicely. Now, hopefully, now, if you go onto Facebook, there's a, there's a, the channel, there's a page called Sunderland Till I Die, and there's somebody on there called Jake Clennell, and he's, he said this. Now, this is interesting. Nazari Rushin is a forward who shows solid off the ball movements, being clever to detect spaces to run in behind, varying direction to his runs constantly, and getting in between defenders to attack those spaces. He shows reliable and varied finishing, being capable to take the ball out of the penalty box, turn and shoot. Happy days, and there's lots more on there about this bloke. Now, we're going to show you some goals. If I can get the goals off YouTube, I'll put them on here right now. Let's watch Rushin with his footwork. Lovely. Inside the penalty box to score the goal. Absolutely brilliant, nimble footwork from Rushin. Looks really good, this lad. Right foot. Hey, look at this. Puts it inside inside the keeper. Keeper, no chance. Keeper falls on his ass. Nips in between the keeper and the defender. Showing great speed, great awareness to put the ball. Johnny on the spot. Watch it again. Look at that. Rushing in. Rushing in. Nips in between the keeper and the defender. There you go. Left foot as well. He can use his left foot. Absolutely fantastic. And use both feet. Scores with his left and scores with his right. Let's watch it again. Runs in the box. Past the defender. Nips it past the keeper. Keeper, no chance. Look at the space. Look at the space. The pace there to get me past the defender. Now he cuts in the box. Does he pass it? No, he slips it past the hapless keeper. Absolutely brilliant. That finish was amazing. Let's watch it again. Inside the penalty box, right foot cuts round inside the post. Look at that right foot. Defenders all around. He nips it past the keeper. Wow. I'm going to be absolutely gutted if this bloke doesn't sign now. Wise men say only fools rush in. But see that goal on the right hand side, are we? The, the speed to nip in front of the, 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 the opposing player, to grab the ball, to run down the wing, cut inside in the box and score. How calm, cool and collective is he on the ball, putting the ball in the back of the net. He can shoot with his right foot and his left foot. Oh, Get him in the side on Saturday. <laughs> so there we have it. This striker is almost going to be here for the start of the new game against Southampton. Now, what do we do? Do we do this? Do we remove Barr? Now, he's right-footed, remember, and Clark. Now, Clark obviously has to go back on this side, which he played. He did play a lot of that against Coventry. And then we're going to have this other lad. If he comes in, do you put him straight in the side over bar? Questions, questions galore tonight. Now, personally, yes, why not? Let's see what he can offer. Let's see what he can do. You know, if people say there's this, you know, communication barrier, but players know how to play football. That's what they do. They get paid to play football. They know the ins and outs and they know the basics of football. I'm sure with a couple of couple of train sessions, he could be just as good as Barr, if not better. My personal opinion, I don't know for me whether Barr will ever cut 
the cloth cut, the mustard do the job on the pitch. He's great at running down the line. He's great at getting the ball and, he, and, and, and getting all that, you know, the pace and the direction and, and the yards on the ball. But the final ball has been wanting so badly with Barr. Want the lad to succeed. Ideal situation, you know, the, the perfect... You know, the perfect um, example was that ball to Job. Job clean through, couldn't get the ball across. Simple ball across, unfortunately he couldn't. And I feel for the young dad, I wanted to succeed and do well. Now there was only two people, and you let me know in the, in the comments down below if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm incorrect, got the correct score, nails the peach. It was Liam Nickel and Niall Brady. So well done on correcting the correct score, predicting the correct score of Nils the Peach against Coventry, and you'll get a point in the big book of C. And also, I'm going to start to do a few, one or two little videos for those members out there, members channel only, and I've got eight members so far. John Hensel, Ian Curry, Morris Marriott, Andrew Simpkins, Archie J, Ian Harden, Manuel Del Toro, and Funds 1971. I'll put little snippets on membership only ones just because at the end of the day I've got to do something for them because they are, you know, members of the channel. So there you go. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. A quick one. We are so close now of getting the new striker in. He's coming over for a medical very shortly. Everything's been, everything's been agreed. All the terms have been agreed. All the money's been agreed according to sources. Apart from my source who says there's nothing coming out of Sunderland. It is, has, it's, it, now it is as tight-lipped as it's ever been. Everything's been shut down inside the camp. No information sneaking out from anywhere at Sunderland. All this noise is from the Ukrainian side. And end of the day, they can do what the hell they want. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. And we'll see you later on the week, if not sooner, with some new news on the new striker. Signed, sealed and delivered. We'll see you later. Thank you. There we have it. Absolutely lovely. Cheap sausages for some good potatoes and veg with lashings, and I mean absolutely lashings of gravy. I love a good dump of gravy on me dinner. Look at that, keep on pouring it, keep on pouring it. That's a business. Bon appetit.